Good morning, Patrick here, live from Complete Health, and I wanted to just go over a topic of something that I've had to go through with quite a lot of patients this week, which is the conversation of an anterior pelvic tilt. Now, an anterior pelvic tilt is a change in someone's posture, especially when we look at the low back and the pelvis, and this one's a little bit more subtle. People hide this a little bit better than, say, for example, something like the anterior head carriage. The anterior head carriage is a really common posture and people see it really obviously because it's characterized by the position of someone slouching through the head. However, an anterior pelvic tilt is maybe not as common. You might not see it quite so easily. However, it's there. It's there in those people that spend a lot of time sitting at a desk. What are the most common traits of an anterior pelvic tilt and what kind of problems or implications can it actually start to cause? Now, an anterior pelvic tilt typically happens when we sit too much and a certain set of muscles become very, very imbalanced. So the, the muscles that we're looking at are your abdominal muscles, your lower back muscles, your glutes and your hip flexors. And they come in a, an imbalance, which they call a crossed posture. So your hip flexors and lumbar spine become very, very tight and then your glutes and your abdominals become very, very weak. So they say that the muscles obviously come in a tightness or a weakness in a cross. Now, this starts to cause for the pelvis to tip forward. Now, it maybe seems like a really trivial or simple thing in that it might not cause any implications or problems for you, but that change in the position and the tightness of certain muscles starts to lead to certain dysfunctions that can actually cause pain and injury. Now, the most common one being with the hip flexors going really tight, your hip flexors actually insert both into your lumbar spine, which is your low back, and into your hip. And by actually tightening and shortening that muscle, what starts to happen is the hip starts to pull up into the capsule and the lumbar spine, which should have a curve, starts to get pulled down towards the hips. So you get a shortening both of the hip coming up into the capsule and the lumbar spine starting to shorten down, which means we get that this over accentuation of a curve, which starts to create a few problems. The joints at the back of the spine start to drive into each other and create friction, e.g. equilibrium pain. Uh, the hip starts to drive up into the hip capsule, again, starting to cause friction, e.g. causing pain. Uh, the pressure in the joints can start to cause degeneration on the discs and actually start to encroach the nerve root spates coming out from the back of the spine, e.g. causing pain. Uh, the muscles in the low back become excess excessively tight, again, e.g. causing pain. And so what we start to see with these kinds of problems, we'll start to see changes in people's athletic performance, their strength, uh, their range of motion, they might have increased levels of pain. Uh, they may even find that it starts to create problems with stability in their lower limbs, and they can start to cause uh, injuries such as knee injuries, ankle injuries, uh, low back injuries, hip injuries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anterior pelvic tilt is really actually quite basic dysfunction and probably one of the most common things we actually see in our clinic. And if you wanna learn how to actually correct those things, we have got a tutorial on how you can correct an anterior pelvic tilt over on our YouTube channel, which shows you how to stretch out your hip flexors, tells you how to do the myofascial releases and stretches for your lower back, teaches you how to strengthen up your glutes and your abdominals in a way that can start to correct these things. Now, like anything, an anterior pelvic tilt will normally have developed over time because it's a pattern, something that we've repeated a number of times. So it's gonna take time to actually reverse that process in the same sense. So you'll actually have to stretch those tissues out to start actually getting that pelvis to tilt back again uh, so that you can actually start to correct those, those dysfunctions functions, those dysfunctions. Guys, if you've got any questions, please obviously leave some comments below. Uh, we love, love helping people uh, to get over their injuries and their problems. Maybe you've noticed that you've started to get an increase in problems such as lower back pain, sciatica, uh, etc. And so these kinds of videos could be really, really helpful for you to resolve those problems. So jump over to our YouTube channel. They're in a playlist called Self Help by Area. Our YouTube channel is just Complete Health Eastbourne. Whilst you're over there, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. We'll speak to you again soon. Take care.